we want to begin with what we thought was going to be just a little bit of a you know, a formality or potentially a little bit of a certainty. We get the news that uh, Lane Kiffin was signing an extension with uh, Ole Miss and that things were starting to move in the direction of Hugh Freeze. Multiple reports had indicated that the conversations had been going on for weeks. They were just finalizing the details. No Hugh Freeze news. No Hugh Freeze news. No Hugh Freeze news. And then this morning, our own Dennis Dodd, Hearing pushback on Auburn administration, re the football hire now that Lane is staying at Ole Miss. Plan A was Lane, plan B was Freeze. Don't know if Auburn had a plan C. Bears watching again that coming from our own Dennis Dodd. So before we get into some of the uh, news and the job openings that I think we've got a little bit more concrete information on, let's get into what is a, a a little bit of a difficult or tricky situation is tough to navigate. There's a lot of passion going on within this conversation. So what is happening at Auburn and what piece of this do you feel the most certain about? <laughs> the piece I feel the most certain about is Auburn happening and dysfunction happening <laughs> in a coaching search. As for after that, I don't know. Yeah, there, there's so many kind of balls up in the air here, right? So wh what do we know? I, I think it's pretty well accepted at this point that Auburn wanted Lane Kiffin, right? Yes. I suspect that that was AD John Cohen's choice, okay? When that fell through, it got fairly well circulated. Now, was that by Hugh Freeze's camp or by Auburn people or both uh, that Hugh Freeze was the backup choice? I think that's probably true, but I would question whose backup choice, right? Was that fully... John Cohen's choice. I know we've spoken on the air before how Cohen was the AD for Dan Mullen at Mississippi State when, you know, Mississippi State was actively trying to narc on Ole Miss and get them in trouble and have their players talk about some of the recruiting inducements and things that they were allegedly offered by people associated with Ole Miss. So again, I'd be a little bit surprised if that was really Cohen's plan B, but my suspicion here is that it was a lot of people at Auburn's plan B. And now, according to Dennis Dodd, there's some pushback on that as probably well there should be. You have to be concerned that a guy is actively DMing a girl, right, right. who didn't make any allegations against football, right, at, at least not on, on, on Freeze's team, just out of the blue, jumping into people's DMs, which is not new for him. And and it just it's not a good look at all for, for a guy who's had his past to do that. And I think it, it raises some questions about his self-control. And if you're an Auburn administrator, not an Auburn booster, that might worry you some. I mean, there's plenty of guys who can get the job done at Auburn. You don't need to hire Hugh Freeze. I I think it is important. I'm glad you mentioned that because one thing and that it's I, new. It goes against the whole change narrative, right? Like it, that's a new thing. That's from this summer. It's that's not yeah. This what I have, Miss. what I have seen from the pushback and the campaign of emails that are being sent to Auburn's administration regarding the potential hire of Hugh Freeze. Um, is less to do with what happened at Ole Miss, if not nothing to do with what happened at Ole Miss, because now there's blowback to the blowback, right? Now we're starting to get the columns about forgiveness. Now we're starting to get the the messages about, it's like, well, I know people who have done, the, like th this, this is not uh, about, uh, in my opinion, this is uh, a, a pushback that is coming from the, uh, the handling, the potential tampering, the interference uh, with any kind of uh, sexual violence investigations, right? Yeah, right. I mean, I, I, I don't. I'm like, we're. I don't want to like step in this here, which is why I'm glad we have a group, we're not a one man show, where you can just come out here and you know hang yourself on this one. But I think that the um, what happened at Ole Miss, both in terms of the NCAA violations and both in terms of his own personal life, does not seem to be at the center of um, what is some pushback and a campaign for pushback against Hugh Freeze, right? Yes. Okay. Have you guys been DM'd by Hugh Freeze? Yes. No. I have. So we got half the show. Mm -hmm. He's definitely a DMer. Like he, and yeah, I'm shocked you haven't been, bud. Your DMs are yeah. open, right? Uh, they weren't for a while. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know that. I, the one thing I, I'm more along the lines with Tom. Like the one thing I feel certain of is that Auburn this search is going to be dysfunctional, just like the last off season was just a complete dumpster fire. 
And remind me again, what number coach was Brian Harson for them to go through before they, you know, realized, oh, we got to hire somebody? Like, I think this is the thing that's always fascinating to me is that you feel like you're in a position to get whoever you want. We got deep pockets. We can write checks with anybody. And then all of a sudden you come to the realization, oh no, uh oh, there's one down. Lane's done. Now oh, we're getting Hugh, we're getting pushback. Like at some point, where's the self realization that maybe you're not the destination job that you think you are? I think it can be a good job, but I also think there might be some coaches out there who don't want to get into this mess. So I think this thing could get dicey in a hurry. I do think once they look at the other options available, I do think Hugh Freeze would be the guy. I think he'd be a good coach for them. I think he'd be able to win there, but it's not going to play out nice and smooth as everyone thinks it is. See, like that's my concern about Hugh Freeze is even if you just completely erase everything that's already happened, just based on how he is and the fishbowl that that Auburn job is and how dysfunctional it is, do you really want a coach who's out here DMing anybody about anything that they might say about him who takes who has seems to have very thin skin? He seems to respond to anything that is said about him and is concerned about how he is perceived by other people. I, I think he's a very good football coach. I think he did a terrific job at Ole Miss. I don't know if I want to kind of have to deal with some of the potential headaches that would pop up if he's my coach at Auburn. It's also a very different conversation to be had if you're an Auburn fan who just cares about winning, right? Or if you're an administrator who has to supervise Hugh Freeze. It's a very different conversation because if you're an Auburn fan, whether he's truth, truthful to the people that, that that employ him doesn't really matter to you, right? You just care about the wins and losses on, on Saturday. You show up, you cheer, right? You follow the recruiting, that, that kind of stuff. But if, you are, if you're John Cohen, if you're Auburn's president, your ass is kind of in the jackpot. If, if he goes goes there and, and does something that embarrasses you again because you have prior warning. Can't you have a clause or something that says, hey, we're going to run your social media? Or are you worried about other stuff? I mean, seriously, can't you do that? Like, hey, we're going to have somebody run your social media At for least you. get a private cell phone, right? <laughs> right. All of a sudden, you're getting DMs from Hugh F98760214. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh. It's entirely possible they just hire like a crisis PR firm and push this through at some point. Maybe they find a, a time to immediate dump it or to, you know, just kind of news dump it. But do you want to be news dumping your head coaching hire at what I at think? Auburn. Is, is it, right. It's yeah. like a, it's absolutely a top 25 job, right? At, at minimum. Yes. yes. D due to the pay and the recruiting. In a ability, vacuum. Yeah. Even with all the Auburn nonsense, it's still a great job because of the amount of money you're going to make, the amount of money you can pay your coordinators, the players you can recruit titles you can compete for it it's still a great job even that's why we, we're leading the show with it i think there's a lot better candidates than hugh freeze man honestly like they don't have the kind of baggage with proven track records i think yes. so yeah so what who are those things? yeah i'm curious to know too what what about chadwell right what about jeff prom mm -hmm. those guys are really good schemers they, they've, they've achieved a lot at places that are tough have to they win. won in the sec have they beaten Bama? Like that's the thing I think that matters to Ole Miss or sure, Auburn are those things. Now they might be better coaches. I would agree with you on that. I think they might be safer and they have just as much upside. But can you sell that as, hey, this guy has beaten Nick Saban, the thing that we want to do, and he's won at a program with less resources than we can give to him? I mean, look, he's not beaten Bama. No, um, Auburn, they, they also haven't gotten still. fired. Auburn can't sell Coastal Carolina's coach. That's what I, that's kind of what they I'm want. No, to. they want SEC experience. I, mean, I, I get it. But I mean, it's what's not to sell about freaking Jamie Chadwell. The guy took Coastal and it's got a really fun offense and he wins a lot of games. Like, there's plenty to sell. If you're looking for a coach who has proven he can beat Nick Saban, you have a very limited pool of coaches you are able to choose from because you're not getting Kirby. You're not getting Dabo. You're not. I mean, it's just like, okay. All right. Hold on. So, what about a coach that maybe not has beaten Nick Saban, but has led to losses for Nick Saban? Bill O'Brien. <laughs> if you want to, good luck trying to roll that Bama one. Out. Fan, Bama take, fans would love that. <laughs> if you want to take down Alabama, get the man who nearly ended the dynasty as offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien, as the next head coach. Do you yeah, guys know why has the uh, the Deion Sanders smoke seemed to be fading? Is that was that all created by him and his people, where it's not legitimate? Yeah. 
I, I don't think that that Deion Sanders was a legitimate candidate at Auburn. Nothing I've heard suggest, like from people who I trust there, and you hear a lot of different things. Uh, I, nothing I've heard was that he was a real candidate there. But like you said, when it comes to this Auburn job, you hear so many different you do. things. <laughs> It's like, yeah. And it's you, you have absolutely no idea who knows anything or what you're hearing if there's any modicum of truth to any of it. And then it's going to end up being somebody that they just kind of pull out of a hat. That's that's my official prediction. I don't know who it's going to be, but it is not going to be a name we've heard yet. That's my and prediction. And what's crazy is the clock is ticking, which is why all of these other hires are being made as soon as possible because we have one week till the transfer portal opens. We have, what, three or four weeks until – the early signing day, like you need to get on this and get on this soon. And yet you can't make a panic hire like they, but this is where, how can you not have all these decisions made and your ducks in a row so that, you know, all right, as soon as it's done, we're done. They got played. Everyone gets played by Jimmy Sexton. It's unbelievable. I think they might've thought that a, that they knew that Hugh freeze would say yes. And that if Lane says, no, we go Hugh freeze, then we'll move on that. And now they're getting peppered with emails that are being sent to, to Bud's point, administrators but, who are a little bit, you know, like, okay, wait, 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 let's, let's, let's wait. Let's, let's, let's see what happens here. But to Bud's point earlier, we don't know that it was Cohen who viewed freeze as the backup option to Lane Kiffin. I mean, we've seen how this has worked at Auburn before. They had like a coup attempt with their last coaching search to find the, the AD wanted to do one thing. The boosters wanted to do something else. I feel like Hugh Freeze is a booster hire, not an AD hire. And they'll never power? they'll never sell it that way, obviously, if uh, if they do. Oh, the boosters definitely have more power than, than right. Cohen, mm -hmm. ultimately. Right. Like, like the, the, this is how this works. The, the boosters are like owners in the NFL. And they ultimately call the shots if, if they now th most of these dudes are not actually going to pull donations. If you do this or that, they, they might you know kind of grovel about it, but most of them will go along with it within reality, at least for a little while. Cohen's a respected AD. I, I look, nobody's in a better position to know the good and the bad, not nobody, but few are in a position to know the good and the bad of Hugh Freeze than John Cohen. You know, Mississippi State was digging on him. Right, you don't think they had like their own investigators looking into his stuff at, at, at their main chief rival? They damn sure did. So I'm not going to totally rule out he freeze to Auburn. They could news dump this thing. We've also like there's rumors out there about Auburn having interest in James Franklin. There's rumors out there. About yeah. yeah, like what about? I mean, here's the thing. He's I, one. What what if what if the real backup plan was Sonny Dykes and TCU just kept winning and mm -hmm. winning and winning, right? Boom. Um, if, I mean, go ahead, Tom. I was going to say, when we were talking about it the other day on the show, Franklin is the coach I was hinting at. I wasn't dropping the name, but I mean, the rumors are kind of out there now. On, but it's, yeah. Is it, are they, do you think that they are rumors because James Franklin is, um, well, obviously we talked about him when USC opened. We talked about him when LSU opened. Is it because he just, he fits that mold of he's, he's proven, he's got SEC experience. He's been able, he, this season has been fantastic for James Franklin. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a much two. easier. It'd be a much easier sell right now than it would have been at LSU or USC last last winter. He's recruited well at Penn State, like you said. He's got the SEC experience. Like he checks a lot of the boxes for what Auburn would want. And as we've seen with Brian Kelly and with Lincoln Riley, you can't rule anything out. And if you're Penn State right now, you've got to deal like you had to deal with Ohio State. But now Michigan is looking like the actual big dog on the block in the Big Ten, but Ohio State's not going anywhere. You've got USC coming. If you're James Franklin and you're kind of looking at the future of the conference, maybe you're feeling like this is the time to jump. I do think he's got a squad coming back next year. He, yeah. He just the timing signed, would be weird. He just signed a new deal, right? A new 10-year mm -hmm. contract. Yeah, it was Franklin what... and Tucker both got the, uh, the massive deals during the last Ooh. coaching cycle. I don't know what the buyout is. But I mean, money's not real. Yeah, no. Uh, every every coaching contract was signed through FTX. So, oops. 
Um, okay, so when do we think uh, a move on Auburn should be expected? Any time? Like, who knows? Before December fifth, because yes. that that is the day the transfer portal opens wide. 